Uh, uh, you talked about personalization. How important personalization is from the retail and e-commerce perspective? Uh, because you might have noticed that out of the hundred stores, if you look at 90% of the stores will lack personalization and how it becomes detrimental for their growth. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, definitely the biggest and most dominant stores are all using some degree of highly dynamic and personalized search. Um, so that's really where I focus my attention um, with this brand is um, it's a brand right now, but in time I had hoped to plant, uh, turn it into a platform of mm -hmm. sorts that we're going to allow other brands onto it as we migrate off of Shopify, mm -hmm. um, all related other Shopify brands that have created specific hats and shirts and wallets and things that people might want to see with their sneakers. Perhaps they have a certain color scheme or a certain feel or a certain material or something that is complementary to a certain sneaker that they wear. And let's say we have, uh, we are going to implement a, um, certain feature that allows us to know like what sneaker they have. So once they do a search, they can be like, oh yes, this is a sneaker that I own. We mm -hmm. log that into their account. And as they're searching, we're giving them things that go with what they already have. Mm -hmm. um, so this was actually the basis for another startup I began wor working on called Wardrobe, um, which also had a similar premise. Um, but it is the, it is the dominant way uh, if you're not, if you're wasting people's time, mm -hmm. not showing them what they actually want, they're yeah. going to leave. Um, yes. It definitely to uh, Terry's point, like having a dominant product definitely matters yeah. like a lot. And especially if you're only driving like a few products and you're just, you know, focusing on, you know, driving traffic from the platform and then capturing the customer on some key offering and then bringing them back repeatedly. That's an excellent model. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think eventually because we were running a low price point product and didn't, it has pretty good reorder. We were at about 20%, wow. um, which was good for like shoelaces, I thought. Um, mm -hmm. But we really wanted to expand beyond that. And we didn't want to do product development for every possible thing that could be done there. And we realized there was a lot more creativity out already in the sneaker market, a lot of creatives. Um, so we hope to uh, leverage that in the future for that. But back to your point about, um, AI specifically, we do use AI um, in advertising as well. Uh, we mm -hmm. use a product called Tika Metrics on Amazon, um, which has done pretty well for us. And then we're looking at a few other ones using some of the um, keyword harvesting tools we have and layering some bid optimization on top of that, just to like make sure that we're getting the best price um, for clicks and that we're profitable all the way through um, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of SKUs to manage. Well. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Did that, did that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think, track. yeah. So you, you, so you are kind of using AI for typically for advertising, but I think for, for stores also by capturing the intent from the consumers directly by yeah. knowing what they are. Getting to know more about them and using that information to feed into along with some other data that we collect, like mm -hmm. feeding that alongside and, delivering the best product at the right at the right time yeah. um, either through like an email follow-up or directly in the search when mm -hmm. um, when they make the search 